In this video, we're going to look at how to connect your Autogen Studio to Microsoft Azure's OpenAI, OpenAI service. And so if you prefer not to use the standard OpenAI API, uh, I know some people have security concerns, and some people are, are more comfortable getting access to that service from Azure. In other cases, some people have maybe a corporate account with Azure where they don't with OpenAI. And uh, whatever the reason may be, uh, we're gonna look at a real simple, easy way, how to connect that, how to find the right information in your Azure account so you know how to connect it. And we'll also look, hey, there's a couple new exciting options that are in there. One is now you, there's a, a new way of adding models. And then when you actually create your workflows, which we'll look at, you can select from the models, but it's a separate process where you used to just be able to create them either in an agent or in a workflow. Now there's a separate interface uh, that you go to, to add the model, but it's a very simple and intuitive. So let's go ahead and dive in. Here we have our brand new Autogen Studio build. I'm running it in a container that's on my Tanzu Kubernetes grid cluster, but it, you can run it on your laptop. You can run it in a container on your laptop. You can run it wherever you'd like to run it. It's very simple to install. You need to have Python 3.10 or newer. You need to have uh, pip, and then it's just a pip install Autogen Studio. For Studio, since it's new, the instructions aren't in the docs yet, but you can go to, there's a, the readme file or in, in the Autogen site, and you can see here on, uh, this page, there's instructions here for installation. You can build from source, which we'll look at in another video, but if you just want to get it up and running real quickly, it's just pip install Autogen Studio, and then you use uh, this command, you know, Autogen Studio UI and, the, and a port number, and, and then it'll run on uh, localhost in your browser. You can see here in my browser. In my case, I'm running on a Kubernetes cluster that's remote. I have some, some dev container stuff behind the scenes that is forwarding over the ports just like it's local. So this would be about the same that you see if you're running it locally or in a container locally, or like I am, I have another video where if you'd like to also run it on, on Kubernetes, I've got that video as well on the channel. So once you have uh, Autogen Studio up and running, there are several changes in the GUI that we'll notice as we go through here. It's mostly over here in build. The first thing that you'll see are models. And uh, you can, uh, so, so now it used to be you would define your model either in an agent or in a workflow. Now you can't define them in an agent or a workflow anymore. If you go to try to define it there, you'll see that you click add model and there's a pull down of models that you've already defined. So in, in the agent or in the workflow, you'll select from the models that you've added to the models tab here. Now, and one thing I just want to touch on real quick is one really exciting new update that is in flight. Notice when you go to new workflow, you have this new option here, two agents, a group chat. Super exciting. This, you can see it here now, it's not exactly real yet. So I'm staying on top of that. I will release a video as soon as the group chat's available. And you can go uh, to Autogen's page on GitHub. And in the issues, you can find a roadmap, if you go to the documentation on the Getting Started page, right at the bottom, there's a link to Roadmap. And that'll link you to the Roadmap page right here. And you can find the issue that you want. In this case, Autogen Studio Group Chat Support. And you can see the status indicator indicates that it is in progress right now. And you can actually click in and, and watch in real time as they add this. And so you can see there's several different checklists that they need to get through here before the, uh, the feature is fully baked. And right now they're in progress, largely done with it. But even though you can see some of the capabilities starting to emerge in the UI, don't get too excited. They're close, not quite here yet. And now let's go ahead and jump in to the models. So add a model, super easy just as it was before, it, it, the dialogue is almost exactly the same, with the exception that now you have to go to this dedicated models tab to be able to add the model. You come here, you click new model, and this looks you know exactly the same as it did before. For OpenAI models, or for a lot of locally hosted models, you just enter the first three fields. If you are using Azure OpenAI service, there's a, you do need to define these uh, API types and API versions. And so one of the things that is available in here by default now is there is a, a model here called GPT-4. By default, it's called GPT-4. 
but you need to make sure it matches your model deployment. It's not already connected to ta Azure, but it's give, has some template here. And I've already put my settings in here, but let's look and see where we gather that information. So first thing here, this is, is going to be your deployment name, right? This isn't the actual model number. It's what you've named your model deployment in Azure. And we'll look at that um, in the Azure UI here in just a second. You'll have your endpoint for your instantiation of the service. You need to put Azure as the, the type. And then here, the, the API version number, which we'll get from documentation. And it's also good to check Autogen. I noticed when I was going through Autogen docs this morning that you need to use at least this version, the 2023 December 1st preview version or newer with Autogen now for some reason. And then down here at the bottom, it says Azure OpenAI model configuration. That is just a description field. So let's look real quick at how we gather this information. So when we go into our Azure portal, it, we can see here, I have a instance of the Azure OpenAI service that I've already started configuring. I'll go ahead and click in here. And in my case, I've configured this model to with the name Genesance-USE2. It's that's my own shorthand just to let me remember it's running in East. Now you can come in here and you can see your keys and your endpoint. And so right here, you have the option to copy your keys. You have two keys and you can regenerate key one or regenerate key two anytime you need to. And this also shows you your endpoint. So from this page, you need to gather one of these keys and you'll need to gather this endpoint. And then the next thing you need is the name that you're going to use. Now that's in model deployments. So if I click in here to model deployments, you'll see it's going to have me open the Azure OpenAI Studio. This is where we manage our model deployments. Okay. Now you can see here, I have a, a couple deployments. I have a, a deployment that's named GPT-4 and a deployment that's named ADA-002. These are not the model names. These are the deployment names. I chose to name my deployment something very similar to the actual model name. It helps me to remember and, and to, to organize my things. But if you see, if I go into this deployment, you can say that the model name itself is actually GPT-4. That's the actual model name. And you notice my deployment name, there's no dash, it's just GPT-4. And I could name this Arts Crazy Deployment. I could name it anything I wanted to. The key thing is, is, is it is your deployment name that you specify when you connect to that. And that's true when you're connecting with Autogen Studio. It's true when you're connecting with a curl or from a Python client library or any client, like wherever you connect to Azure, this is how you connect to Azure. You never specify the actual model name. You create a deployment. Each deployment has one model for each deployment. You don't deploy two models with one deployment. So each for each model you want to use, you'll create a distinct deployment. And then we're going to use this model name. So now we got the information. We saw where to get our keys, our endpoint, and our, our model name. It's actually going to be our deployment name. The uh, other two values that we needed, we don't need to get from our Azure instance. One of them is we have to say the type of, is Azure. You can see that in Autogen documentation or anywhere else that has documentation about how to call Azure OpenAI libraries. So that one's very easy. The other thing is we need to know the API version. That's found in documentation. You can, you know, I, I don't remember exactly where would I do. If I want to see, is this really the version I want to use? Over time, you may need to come in and update this value to a newer, newer API version, something like that. If you, if you end up troubleshooting, you know, I usually just copy and paste this into Google search and it'll find the page in documentation that has the different API versions that are available. And that's it. So you come in and you specify these things. I'm going to press cancel because I've already configured this. And once you uh, have uh, this, you can go into agents and you can customize an agent. But when you want to actually converse with the model, you converse with a workflow. So if I go over here to playground and I say new, it's going to say which workflow do you want to use? And within the workflow, I specify the agent. I can save an agent and that becomes a template that can populate the values in the workflow. But I don't need to. I, I can define all the agent settings I want to directly within the workflow. And so generally, I've been saving things in the workflow as the agent configurations. I wasn't finding them to be especially stable. Now, uh, also another video where we can define those 
in text before we spin up our Autogen Studio. And so when our instance boots up, it will already be customized. And that is a very reliable way of defining agents. But you don't need to even think about agents unless you're starting to get a little bit more serious about it. When you're just dabbling, I think it's a little more convenient. Just go into workflows and define you how you want your agent to behave here. So you can see I already created a, a workflow here called GPT-4 Azure Workflow. I'll just go into this one. Again, when you open this, you're gonna to wanna to select two agent workflow. The group chat option, not fully implemented yet, will be really cool once once they get it fully implemented. Now, is just the two agent is the only one that's currently functional. You can change the name. You can go in and modify an existing one. If you create a new workflow, you see the same exact window and it loads with just about the same exact default here. But I changed the name, the workflow name, so I know this one is the one. Uh, I only have one model defined. Now, in Autogen Studio, you can define a list of models in here if you want, and they will fall back on each other in case one's not responding. And you can also configure your agents in such a way to where they could potentially use different models for different things, depending on what they need to do. But in this base scenario, we just have given this just the GPT-4 via Azure. So I wanna be absolutely certain that's the model that's being used. I don't need to change anything with the user proxy. I'll go into primary assistant. By default, this agent is named primary assistant. Remember, I didn't go to the Agents tab. As you can see over here, the Workflows tab is selected. So whatever I change in, in terms of the agent parameters within this workflow will not change the template. So even though I'm using this primary assistant template, I change the model here to the model I want to use. That only changes it in the context of this workflow. If I go back to the agent, it is still untouched because I have not changed anything. That's nice if you want to be able to change something to test, but you want to make sure that you don't lose the original settings. Those are still saved in that original agent. And I can modify things here just in the workflow to, to test them out. But you can see here, I only have one model, GPT-4. And I'll go ahead and press OK. And now we'll press OK to the workflow. Now we know we have a workflow here that the only model that it has available to it is my GPT-4 deployment within my instance of the Azure uh, OpenAI service. So now we'll go ahead here and I can see. One thing I like to do across the board in Autogen, and this is you know getting better, but just some sometimes if a screen pops up like this did, where it says new sessions, it's showing GPT-4 Azure workflow. And that's because it's going to show the most recently created workflow by default when you open this. Now I found sometimes just because something's displayed, that doesn't mean that its settings have actually been applied. And so it's a good practice, at least at this early stage in Autogen, even though this is what I want, I'm actually going to toggle away from it and toggle back to it just to be certain that on change event that occurs here, that we'll be sure that it has actually triggered the settings that I want to be in place for this workflow. So now I'll go ahead and click create and we can ask a question. Let's just say what uh, color is the sky? If you loaded this up from your own PC's command prompt uh, or, or terminal window or through a container or through the container on Kubernetes I have, you can watch this work from that terminal while it's in progress. But you can see I've already got my answer populated here. But the point wasn't to ask us some type of crazy question. The point was just to demonstrate we've got this working here. So now I'm able to work with the full-fledged GPT-4 model, but through my private contract with Microsoft Azure through my account that I've set up here. So if you've enjoyed the video, thanks a lot for dialing in. We'll see you on the next one.